one second. Sure. You got to scroll right behind me. For, for you, I will. Just to keep going. I'm standing right the side of your shade. Sorry. <laughs> news Now KC here. Don Spence is about to address the news media on filing of the paperwork to block the uh, resolution. My name is Don Spencer. I'm the president of the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association. That's D-O-N-S-P-E-N-C-E-R. Today we have gathered here to make sure that we could file a against a, a protest against the referendum 803 uh, for many reasons. Uh, the main one that has come across, and we have actually I witnessed it myself and recorded it yesterday, is the misrepresentation of the referendum and actually of the law itself that will be going to affect uh, November the 1st. Citizens of the state of Oklahoma have been waiting on this for um, over 112 years, and it's time for them to get their rights back. And a referendum, while we think it would pass easily, because it passed easily through the House and the Senate, is a complete waste of time, and especially with the misrepresentation that it's being portrayed, is completely unnecessary, and it needs to be stopped. And that's what the action is taking place here today. The referendum specifically states that a person would... Uh, in the referendum states that a person would be able to legally carry a firearm on a college campus which is completely inconsistent with the new law going into effect. That is the main objection we have and also I'm going to let uh, uh, Kevin Calvey who's our lead attorney uh, and has filed the protest for us have anything else to say about that. Kevin? Okay, so I'm uh, Kevin Calvey. I'm representing uh, Pro Bono of the Open Second Amendment Association and I believe 36 legislators uh, and uh, two other uh, nonprofits, Oklahoma Taxpayers Unite and Oklahoma Conservative Political Action Committee in this matter. So, uh, anytime that a uh, petition is done, it will delay uh, the effective date of the law. So, even though, as my client has said, we're confident that statewide voters would approve constitutional. Uh, this just by three people going and collecting signatures under false pretenses would lead to a delay and therefore a denial or suppression of the Second Amendment rights of Oklahomans. So uh, it's not about who would win the election, uh, we're confident of that. It's about not delaying uh, the uh, full exercise of the Second Amendment rights. So uh, there are several things that are inaccurate and misleading, at least, about the, uh, the gist of the petition. And this is the thing you can see at the top of each petition. Uh, Mr. Spencer mentioned the question about trying to claim people uh, to get them to sign this under false pretenses by claiming that this will lead to uh, people carrying firearms at education institutions. That's just not true. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a representation here that this will require uh, law enforcement to ask whether a person possesses a firearm during an arrest, detention, or traffic stop. That's also not true. I mean, if you look at this, you'd, you'd think that uh, uh, police are always required to ask, which would be a, potentially a burden on police, uh, which might give police some cause to question uh, the law, but it's just not true. So again, uh, getting uh, signatures under false pretenses. They also don't define what stop or, or detention is. What about a cop saying, stop, you know, don't cross the street like that. It's not a stop, they have to yell out, you have a concealed carry permit, it's uh, very poorly worded. And the, there's only six clauses in the gist, the kind of summary of what the, uh, uh, the gun banning uh, people want to do in their uh, referendum. All six of them are inactive. So another one would say uh, they're calling it uh, permitless carry, which uh, is not entirely accurate. It's certainly uh, loaded to term. Constitutional carry is what this has been known by uh, really all over the country uh, and certainly all the way through the legislature. Uh, secondly, uh, this says that uh, 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 allows the carry of a firearm into any location where carrying firearms is not specifically prohibited. Well, that could certainly lead uh, a homeowner. Gosh, I want somebody carrying a gun in my house. I'm going to put a sign on my house. No, you don't have to. It's still, uh, 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 another thing is it uh, uh, talks about uh, uh, criminalized possession of firearms by aliens illegal in the United States. It's already criminal. So this doesn't. Yeah, double criminal, uh, double secret probation or something. And then uh, it says it makes a uh, constitutional carry, they say, makes failure to disclose a firearm to law enforcement a citation offense with a maximum fine of $100. Th 
this uh, appears uh, intended to uh, try to disparage the constitutional carry law to firearms owners, um, but that's actually not accurate. So uh, the, the bill, the law, now actually states no person shall be required to identify himself or herself as a handgun licensee or as lawfully in possession of other, uh, any other firearm if the law enforcement officer does not demand the information. So it's up to the officer to ask, uh, and then it's then the person uh, does have to respond truthfully. But also, I mean, if you read what they're saying, <laughs> you know, verbatim, what they're suggesting is that if a person has a firearm, even at their house, they, they possess a firearm, right? This suggests that uh, what they're saying constitutional carry does is that a, uh, uh, a firearms owner would have to be yelling out to every cop they saw, hey, I got a gun at home. And uh, it, it's ridiculous. It's like, uh, you know, the scarlet letter. You know, Hester Prince had to wear a scarlet A on her uh, as her punishment. Well, you got gun owners wear a scarlet G. You know, or like the lepers in the book of Leviticus having to shout, unclean, unclean. I mean, it's a very poorly worded referendum petition. And uh, for that ma uh, reason, is getting signatures under false pretenses. So for all those reasons, uh, because this would cause a needless delay in the full exercise of Second Amendment rights of Oklahomans, uh, we filed this petition today. Thank you. Got one that. Yes. Um, if you'll notice on here too, uh, the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association, the Oklahoma Taxpayers Unite, and the Oklahoma Conservative Political Action Committee are involved along with the House of Representatives, uh, Speaker McCall, the floor leader, John Eccles, the Senate Pro Tem Greg Treat and the Senate Floor Leader uh, Kim David, along with three dozen other other legislators, and we have several of the senators and uh, legislators here today at this meeting. So again, this is not exactly uh, something that was just taken lightly and was not pushed through on a whim. This was pushed through in a month because the people wanted it and the governor signed it. So we made sure that that was taken care of, and so there's no reason for this not to take place, uh, go into effect on November the first. Hey Don, you knew the gist wasn't accurate going into this. Why wait till today before uh, before filing this? Well, as you know, it sometimes takes a while to get a locomotion moving, and so once we got things put together uh, and worked with uh, Kevin Calvi on this, uh, today was the day, and we actually we had to another day to get this filed. So actually, work a little bit ahead of the schedule if we got got down to it. I can expect to hear a result from this uh, uh, filing you just made. Uh, Calvi, I'll let you address that. So that's really the Supreme Court's time, and we'll certainly keep you posted on that. Is it, um, is it like uh, the Medicaid expansion challenge where they had, the court had 10 days to assign a hearing date? It's, uh, it's less clear uh, on a referendum petition of this nature. So that one is an initiative petition. Mm -hmm. This is a referendum petition, so it, the procedure can be a little bit different. But I would expect reasonable soon. Uh, anything else? Well, we, can, we can wait until it gets hotter. <laughs> I'd like to thank you guys for, for coming out today. I'd like to thank uh, all the Second Amendment supporters that understand how important it is to keep the rights that are here today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These people showed up on less than 24 hours notice that this was going to take place. This is how important our rights to meet, remain and to actually be returned to the state of Oklahoma, how important it is to people. So again, with the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association, we thank you guys for being here. Thanks, all right. Thanks. Thank you. I see you made it up here, box and everything. That's right. Yes. We'll have to tow it across the street for it. <laughs> well, thank you again. Yeah, thank you, too. I appreciate it. Connor? Oh, okay, good. Do you have a card? That's what we do with me. President, thank you there. As a matter of fact, I wasn't going to come up here at all. I ended up afraid about it and trying to come up here with this bill. So I was able to rearrange my schedule. So we've had several good legislators show up for this event. We've got 36 other legislators that are uh, behind uh, the petition that was filed today to stop their referendum. Nathan Dom, Jay Stiegel, John Eccles, some others, and a group of people. We showed up here with less than 24 hours' notice. Uh, Dale here uh, traveled from across the state. 
Houston this time. Yeah, they're out in their microphone. Right? Yeah. 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 So they're outside. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, Jay? Yeah, doing all right today. Yeah, doing good. Good day. For I'm going to put this. It is a very good day. Thank you for your hard work, too. Thank you, sir. I'm going to put this up on the channel here, and we'll share it to OK2A later tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, I'm going to call it quits here. Got Nathan Dom right here, chatting it up. News now, KC, and I'm clear.